Hi, this is Dr. Eiko Holman. Today I would like to share with you about how guilt and self-punishment are related and certain conditions in the body, the physical symptoms may develop. For example, autoimmune disorder like uh, uh, arthritis, uh, diabetes, Parkinson's, uh, MS, you know, multiple sclerosis, myasthenia gravis, and a few other things that are related to uh, autoimmune disorder would be related to whether it is con conscious or not unconscious self-punishment, okay? Because autoimmune system disorder is the, your own immune system is attacking your own body and uh, have uh, that uh, symptoms. But uh, many occasions it may be obvious and some other occasions it's not obvious. And so the obvious one uh, I'm going to share with you and uh, also non-obvious ones. Uh, one uh, man who was in a wheelchair already with MS and uh, while well, he was young, young boy, his father in drunken rage would beat his mother up almost to the bloody mess and he tried to, you know, as a young boy, tried to come between them and he was beaten up. And so he was, he said to himself, when I grow up, I'm going to kill him. Uh, you know, that, that rage and anger. And uh, later, as he became uh, a little older and he uh, earned some money and uh, he uh, bought a handgun and he gave it to his mother and he said when the, you know uh, husband tried to beat him up again be sure to use it in self-defense I mean you don't have to actually shoot him but uh, you know show him to intimidate him that uh, he will not beat you, beat you up to the bloody mess. And uh, one day he came home and uh, he found his mother on the floor in the pool of blood. And she did not use the gun, handgun on the husband, but she actually shot herself. And, you know, can you imagine the grief and shock of this young man? And he, he was just so grief-stricken, and he felt so guilty about the death of his beloved mother. And within a few months, I believe, he said to me, he started to have certain symptoms of MS, multiple sclerosis, and he, you know, myelin sheath would be, you know, around the nerve uh, fibers would be in this raveled and then become raw, and then the nerve started to touch each other, and so all the signals from his brain to the limbs and uh, hands and feet and so on, it was started to go haywire. And so eventually he had trouble walking and handling and uh, he said, uh, my limbs and, you know, hands and so on do not obey me, my, uh, you know, brain uh, instructions anymore. And so eventually he was in a wheelchair and uh, I was introduced to him through uh, my uh, this was in Canada, and the pastor uh, knew about me and so asked me if I'm willing to minister to him. And so when I uh, talked to him, he was still in a really continuous grieving and self-punishment because he was, you know, blaming himself for his mother's death. And by that time, his father was already dead. And so even though, though he wanted to kill him, and he, he did not, and, but uh, he was in the mode of self-punishment. And so I asked him, are you willing to forgive yourself? And he said, 
oh no, I can't, I can't, it is too horrible. And, and you know, because of me, my mother is dead. And so was continuously saying, you know, I can't forgive myself. And finally, I blurted out, and I know it was God's, you know, Holy Spirit directing me. How dare you that you could not forgive yourself when Jesus died for you. And what you're saying is what Jesus did for you in dying for you was not good enough. And he suddenly, you know, came to his realization. Oh, is that what I'm doing? What I'm saying is Jesus died for me then died for everyone else and then the guilt is already taken care of. But I was saying it was not good enough. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jesus. Then, and now I said, are you willing to forgive yourself? And finally he said, yes. Yes, Lord, because of what Jesus had done for me. I'm willing to forgive myself. And I'm, I receive God's forgiveness, and then I need to forgive myself. And the moment that he did so, and that's something shifted in the spirit. And then I said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahshua Mashiach, and you know, uh, Yeshua is, you know, the Hebrew word of Jesus. And I release you from that self-condemnation and self-punishment and that caused the MS, multiple sclerosis condition. And so I now said, and the potter's wheel, I had the, the you, you know, the CD already made and so he was able to receive the restoration and recreation of the myelin sheath over the nerves. And so I, I told him to just sit quietly and allow the Holy Spirit to give him the vision of the myelin sheath being restored over the every nerve, uh, you know, cells. And he actually sensed almost like a vision of the melon sheet being restored. And so oh, he was saying, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so it was actually happening in, in the, his vision. And so when that vision was completed and the melon sheet was restored, I said, okay, get up and walk. And he said, I can't. And so I said, I'll help you. And so I helped him get up from the wheelchair and made one step. I was holding his arm, next step, another step, and so on. And then pretty soon, I took my arm away from his arm. <laughs> and then he, he, he didn't know it. He, he go, continued to walk one step at a time. But then he looked at his limbs and she said, oh, my limbs are functioning and my brain ordering to moving my leg, legs and you know so on is working. See previously his legs are not obeying the orders and now he saw himself walking and, and without me assisting he started to walk normally and uh, oh praise the Lord he's shouting and jumping up and down and pretty soon he was running. Praise the Lord and Next day, he called me up, and I was living in that uh, area in Canada, and he called me up and he said, my favorite sport is tennis playing and horseback riding. And he did both, horseback riding, from wheelchair to horseback riding and tennis player. Can you imagine that? And so this was really dramatic change happening. and. Uh, I can give you many other uh, examples. I want to uh, give you one more. Let's, let me see. This was the uh, helicopter pilot. And uh, some of you may remember TV series called uh, Twilight Zone. And this was being filmed in California. And this pilot, helicopter pilot, was 
doing this shooting and then uh, accident happened and then the one of the actors got killed with the helicopter blade cutting his body into half and uh, I think some of you may have heard about it and then one child uh, one, one young young girl uh, also uh, got hurt. I, I don't think she was killed, but the, her mother was just going over and weeping and weeping. And this helicopter pilot felt so terrible, and everything was his fault. He felt, and so he was, you know, going over the scene of the accident again and again and again because it was all you know, shot in the filming. And so he was looking at the, his own, uh, you know, helicopter accident. And uh, uh, this was in the uh, uh, California. Uh, he was a member of the uh, uh, Church on the Way. And I was ministering at that time in that area. And so he told me about his constant guilt and uh, nightmares and, y y you know, all, all those things are constantly coming back to him. And so I allow that self-punishment and he himself started to develop MS type of uh, symptoms in his own body. And he was not as bad as the, you know, going uh, into a uh, wheelchair like the other man, but uh, he was instantly set free and uh, counseled and nullified the power of that constant self-punishment, the uh, guilt trip. And so he, he was healed and set free from that uh, guilt trip. And so the, the, another one was the, th th this, th there are many inc instances, but this one is a lady who discovered the, the cancerous tumor in her womb and uh, she came to me and said, do you think God is punishing me? And so I said, what makes you think so? And she said, uh, uh, because I had three abortions. And uh, did you repent? And of course I repented every day, every day, but I still feel guilty. And uh, uh, my doctors found the cancerous tumor in my uh, womb, uterus. And, uh, and it's inoperable, she said. And so I said, you have the self-punishment, the guilt trip, the enemy is constantly plaguing you and putting that uh, guilt over you. And so I told her to repent and ask the Holy Spirit to erase the sin record of her, you know, uh, abortions. And uh, then I made her repeat after me and said, now my sin record is totally wiped out by the precious blood of Jesus and from Satan's record. Therefore, Satan cannot put blame against me because the record is totally wiped out by the blood of Jesus and my record it became as white as snow and therefore I command you, Satan, that you can no longer come against me you have no legal grounds to put any sicknesses or diseases upon me. And so I made her repeat that, and then her countenance changed. And then she felt great about that, and she went home with a you know, different attitude. And I believe it was two, three days later, she called me and she said, guess what? I felt like some, something like a, a, a pain of pushing out. It's almost like a labor pain, pushing something out of my uterus. And something came out. I caught it in a, a you know, bathroom, and she found it was like a piece of liver coming out of her uterus. And she picked it up in the plastic bag and she took it to her doctor's lab and they discovered it was a cancerous tumor came out of her own uterus 
automatically on its own accord. No medication, no uh, surgery, and it just came out of its own accord. And so she was totally free of that cancerous tumor that was inoperable in her u uterus. Praise the Lord! Once she felt totally free of that condemnation of guilt and self-punishment, the enemy, and because of the sin record, is totally wiped out. So she had totally free of guilt and Satan could not do anything about it after God took that out. Amen. And I believe this being free from the, you know, sin consciousness and the guilt will set you free from sicknesses and diseases and uh, other conditions that will hold you in captivity. Okay, so this is called the, the guilt trips and there's a uh, little booklet available and I, I would like you to take the heed from the Holy Spirit that once you are set free from that guilt and your sin record will be wiped out by the precious blood of Jesus and then you cannot be under the condemnation. Amen. God bless you.